Teach Man to Fish channel here. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different for me. This is new. I'm going to be trying to do electrolysis to clean a cast iron cauldron. I've already done it the old fashioned way with elbow grease, but this is, I was given a, a cauldron by a friend of mine and it is a big cauldron, the biggest one I've ever had. And it's was used as a decorative for a period of time and they put uh, some paint on it. And I wanted to figure out a way to get that paint off, did some research, and apparently you can use electrolysis and it will blast it off or loosen it up enough that you can then uh, scrub or I'm gonna try pressure washing to get the last bits or the remnants of that paint off. So did some research on it and let's see how it works. Items that I'm going to need, roll of plastic, five gallon bucket, sodium carbonate, not bicarbonate, like Arm & Hammer. Arm & Hammer does make this. It's in uh, washing soda, things like that. So this is, you can see here, 100% sodium carbonate. To add to my electrolysis mixture, some sacrificial electrodes, wire, obviously pretty important, a dirty old cauldron. Look at the size of that thing. This is a, a cauldron that I did the other way of doing it with just elbow grease. Restored this when it was a rusty beast too. Got it all uh, squared away. That's a stand that I made for it. And it's, it's big enough so that I can hold that cauldron over top of my bayou burner. And I'll probably wind up building some form of stand for this one as well. You can see some of that paint. Not as worried as much about the outside pig ear there. There's more of that paint that you can see on there. Kind of a metallic colored paint. There's the rust. Not, I don't think it's too terribly pitted. I think it'll clean up nice. This one you can see, it's, it's got some pretty good sized pits in it, but it works fantastic. A container large enough to hold it. That's what the plastic's for. This is just a, an old crate that I'll line with plastic. Something to hold the electrodes. A car battery and a charger. Let's get started. First thing we do, get our crate lined with plastic. Fill it up five gallons at a time and keep track of each five gallons. All right, so there we go. That's 11 five gallon buckets, 55 gallons of water in there. Make sure you're picking the right kind of crate. It's kind of, I was looking at it and thinking, yeah, it looks solid when, when I was making this and thinking about the concept I thought this crate would be adequate but whew, I really hope so good thing I'm doing this in the garage it busts so this place will dry out so there it is on to the next step set up some electrodes and make our juice throw in our sodium carbonate so here goes our mixture sodium carbonate Every five gallons but you can also use Arm & Hammer wash soda or super wash booster I think it might be called just look at your labels and just make sure it says sodium carbon it is all mixed in now we will set up our electrodes Well, 
Well, that's it. Electrode set up. I put three in. Critical that they not be touching the pot. One in the middle. So I figured I'd hang one in the center on each side. I might get some shadowing on the outside of the pot, but really I don't care about the outside. It's the inside that I'm after. Again, all three electrodes joined together. Run to the positive terminal, negative terminal. Attaches to the material. Said you can run it off of a battery charger at the same time. I have it set for two amp. Uh, you don't want any AC to go to feed into the process because if it does, it will stop the electrolysis. It's all gotta be one way flow. So I have those set up so that the charging clips are touching the terminal and the wire and the insulation is protecting it from touching the copper wire. Probably next update will be in the morning. Just real quick cover one thing and show you it in action here. So these bubbles that are being generated are actually hydrogen and oxygen being separated out of the water. Just be careful that you're not accumulating that hydrogen and oxygen because it is flammable and you don't want it to pull up or collect anywhere or somewhere where a spark can set it off. This is 24 hours later and I decided to switch up the electrodes a little bit and I decided to redo the connection that I had and I ended up putting a clamp on and it has absolutely taken off which I think it needed. Bumped it up to 10 amps so this is actually the battery runs in series battery is actually what's firing it. But what's made the difference at this point is absolutely changing that connection over to a clamp and getting a good solid connection. I moved all the electrodes inside the circumference of the cauldron so that uh, I'm actually working more on the inside. Well, it's been almost three days and I'm gonna pull it out and take a look. And I made a couple of changes over the past couple of days. Put some different electrodes in. I put some, just some regular steel. And that's a railroad spike. Right there, I drilled a hole in it. It didn't seem to do quite as well. But I'm gonna pull it out now and take a look at it. Actually, first of all, I did wanna look at each of the electrodes. Look at that. What a gunky mess. There it is, out of the bath. And there is certainly, the paint is coming off, which was the main thing I was worried about my best to get that paint off. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, pressure wash it and see what it looks like cleaned up. I will take that all day long, considering what it looked like. A little bit of pits. 
on the outside. There's still a little bit of paint left, but it, I put the electrodes to focus on the inside. You can see some little flecks of paint that are still in there. But I specifically went after the inside because that's where the food is going to be touching. So I'll try and get it's getting ready to rain. So I think I'll try and get at least one coat of seasoning on it. Otherwise, this sucker's going to rust in a second because it's bare, bare cast iron. Hard to believe where it came from. So we're set up, there's my stand. Looks like it's gonna work pretty well for this one too. Maybe not quite the best, but we'll see. Get it to drying out. We'll do this a little slow. Let that heat up slow so we don't end up cracking something. Crank the flame up a little bit more. There you can see it's starting to dry out. Now I do this in phases. I'm gonna do the inside a couple of times before I go to the outside. I wonder how long it's been since this thing's seen. All right, this is ready to go. Pour's opened up, dried out. Now I use a, a Crisco oil. The, I'll let you go through the debate, the great debate on which oil to use, but I found this one. It's a, it's a blend. It's got canola, grapeseed, and something else. Um, in there so it's a nice blend uh, it's what I personally have found to have the best uh, non-stick property but pick your own yeah. see that oil shimmer up there the key is light coat alright that was pretty impressive the amount of oil that that thing soaked up heat up. I got a gut feeling I'm only going to get one coat in tonight, but look at that thing. She looks good. Pushing right up through that smoke point. Exactly what I'm looking for. See how clean that inside is. There's where it's polymerizing right there in the middle. It's so shiny, I'm having a rough time getting it to focus. Wow, look at that. I'm going to have to thank my friend profusely for laying this one on me. So, cool. so this will be the position that I'll do most of the seasoning in. So it's upside down. I'll flip it back over. Turn on the flash here so you can see up inside there. And I'll do this five or six times. And it takes a while for each cycle because you're heating it up and letting it cool down, handling it, coating it, turning it back over, firing it. So it, it takes a little bit, but well worth it. And that's that, what that water ended up looking like. Gunk all over it. And the water. Good stuff, not in the pot. So you can see that it's not actually the battery clamp, charging clamps that are running the electrodes or attached to the pot. Um, the way I do that is I make this loop a little bit tight, a little smaller than the terminal. Put this onto the terminal. It locks itself on. And then where the battery charging clamp attaches, it's actually not touching the wire. So in the series, the clamp attaches to the terminal. The wire is wrapped around the terminal. Yep, so there it is. I hope you enjoyed the Teach a Man to Fish channel video. Uh, I enjoyed that project. That was uh, educational, challenging, 
some stuff to figure out. It keeps me busy for a bit, which is a good thing. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to click like, subscribe, and uh, share. I've got more videos out there, and in the future there will be videos of me actually cooking. Maybe some gumbo, uh, maybe some Brunswick stew, you name it, I'm going to cook it in that pot. Teach Amanda Fish Channel. Thanks for watching.